Welcome back. In today's video, we're going through Art of Electronics exercise 1.23. This exercise is focused around first order RC filters. So that's basically a resistor and capacitor. In the question, we need to show the following statement is true. The statement being, now the answer is astonishingly simple. In all cases, the worst case impedance is just R. So obviously to understand this question, we need to read up a bit from the book and the paragraph above. So here is a short summary of the paragraph in question. The key points for this analysis are that we can ignore the phase shift. So capacitor reactance is what we will be using to come to our conclusions. The question also says that the signal output impedance should be small compared to the input impedance of the load. To simplify the understanding, we can just look at the maximum input impedance as this is basically the worst conditions for driving a load. And we can look at just the minimum input impedance as this is the hardest load to drive as it will be consuming the most current. And finally, the paragraph finishes off by saying the worst case input and output impedance is always R. So let me now show you how we can come to that conclusion. Um, so firstly, I will be going through low pass filters and then I will be going through high pass filters. And you'll see that we get to the same conclusion for, for both cases. So to start with, I'm going to show you the solution for low pass filter. From what we read in the summary, we need to calculate the maximum output impedance and the minimum input impedance. When you read the paragraph above the question, um, it talks about a source RC filter driving a load RC filter. So this is the circuit that I've shown you on this diagram here. Obviously, this is a bit confusing um, because we don't really need to look at the whole thing. We can just focus on one part of it to solve the question. So what I've done here, so this is the full circuit that's being described in the paragraph above the question. Um, I've simplified that to this model here. So that's just the resistive, resistive component here and the capacitive component over here. So our output impedance of the source is basically defined by this point. So now let's look at the reactance of a capacitor. So reactance, you can think of it as resistance of a capacitor at a certain frequency. And that is given to us by this equation over here. So reactance of a capacitor, Xc, is equal to 1 over 2 times pi times the frequency times the capacitance. Now just quickly analyzing that equation, we can see that the reactance is going to be maximum at DC. So when this value of F is zero, we get basically one divided by zero. So that means XC is going to be um, infinite. And we can see that when frequency is increased, um, this term over here starts to become larger. And that means that we're dividing one by a larger number. So XC is going to be at minimum for very high frequencies. Now to analyze this circuit, firstly, what we need to do is calculate the Thevenin equivalent circuit. If you want to know how to do that, please check out this other video that I made earlier. So in order to produce a simulated output from this circuit and to calculate the Thevenin equivalent um, resistances and everything, um, what I've done is basically um, created a low pass filter using the values you see over here. So I have a 10 microfarad capacitor and a 100 ohm resistor. So to calculate the Thevenin equivalent circuit and the Thevenin resistance, which is ultimately what we are after, which as that will be the, the source resistance in this case, what I've done is put down some uh, frequency numbers on column A, and then I've calculated using the formula I showed you before, the reactance of a capacitor. So you can see I've got one divided by two times pi times the frequency times by a capacitance value. So in this case, I've put the capacitance value as 10 microfarads. 
However, the number doesn't really matter because the solution will come out to be the same. Now from there, I have calculated VTH, which is the feminine equivalent voltage source. And that is equal to V in, which I've set as one for a simple value to use. Multiplied by that by XC, which is in parallel with the output line and plus the 100 ohm series resistor. So the VTH calculation is basically when nothing is connected to the output. So we have open circuit on the output. So essentially what we have is a potential divider with the R and the C with our VTH being on the C. So you can see when the frequency is at minimum, we get all the voltage across this capacitor. To calculate the short circuit current, what we need to do is short out our output line. So that is short out the capacitor. And basically our equation becomes independent of frequency now, as we are basically doing resist uh, the voltage input divided by the re series resistor, which in this case is 100 ohms. From there, we can calculate our Thevenin equivalent resistance and it is equal to the Thevenin voltage divided by the short circuit current. So that's column C divided by column D. Now in the two plots that I have here, you can see the capacitor reactance and how that changes with frequency. So I've got the resistance or the reactance of the capacitor on the Y axis and I've got frequency on the X axis. And you can see as the frequency goes to zero, the capacitance, the reactance of the capacitance approaches infinity. And at very high frequencies, the, capacit the reactance of the capacitor is very low. Now let's look at the Thevenin equivalent resistance, which is our source resistance in this example. And we can see it is at maximum at 100 ohms for very low frequencies. And as we are looking for the worst case, um, basically the maximum resistance, we can say that the maximum output impedance is 100 ohms and this occurs at very low frequency. So from the graphs, we saw that the Thevenin resistance is highest at DC and is equal to 100 ohms. So to answer the question, it's simply R. So our worst case output impedance, which is the maximum output impedance, is equal to 100 ohms. Now let's look at the case for input impedance. Now the worst case input impedance is when the resistance or the impedance of the circuit is at minimum. So, so this is looking at the load side of the circuit. So basically we have the resistor R2 in series with the capacitor. Now this is a little bit easier to calculate so we don't need to go to the Thevenin equivalent circuit for this. And our total quote unquote resistance is equal to R, which is the resistance here and the reactance of the capacitor. So same as before, the reactance of the capacitor is equal to this. And it's at a maximum value when the frequency is very low and it's at a minimum value when the frequency is very high. So now if you plug in the numbers for DC and for very high frequency, we can see that the input impedance is equal to R plus infinity at DC and R plus zero at very high frequency. So obviously we're interested in the minimum input impedance. So we can say that the input impedance worst case is equal to the resistance or simply R as set out by the question. Now let's look at the high pass filter. In a high pass filter, you basically have the capacitor first and then the resistor goes in parallel with the load. And similar to before, I've drawn the circuit as described in the question. So we have a driving RC filter and we have a load RC filter. So we'll be focusing firstly on the output impedance. So we're looking at this part over here and using the same analysis, we get to a similar answer. So now let me show you the Excel calculations. So for the high pass filter, what I've done, um, which is similar to the low pass filter, is I've got frequency in column A, 
and I've gone from uh, 0 0.01 Hertz all the way up to about 50,000 Hertz and in column B I've calculated the reactance of a capacitor which does not change because obviously we're just looking at a capacitor as an individual component what does change when you're looking at the Thevenin equivalent circuit, obviously, is now the resistor, the 100 ohm resistor that we used previously, is in parallel with the output. So um, when we are doing our potential divider equation, the, the VTH will now be equal to basically this. So we have the input voltage times by the fixed value resistor divide by the fixed value resistor plus the reactance of the capacitor. From there we can calculate the short circuit current. Um, previously the short circuit current was frequency independent however now it's going to be frequency dependent as it's mainly driven by the capacitor as we are going to short circuit the load so effectively taking out the resistance from the equation. So in order to calculate the short circuit current, we basically do our voltage supply divided by the reactance of the capacitor. So we get the following numbers. And then finally, we can calculate our Thevenin equivalent resistance, which is equal to the Thevenin equivalent voltage source divided by the short circuit current. Now the reactance of the capacitor hasn't changed obviously, so I won't go through that graph again. But the, we can see the, the Thevenin equivalent resistance of this circuit is a maximum of 100 ohms at very low frequency and then um, only goes down as the frequency increases. So similar to before, we can say that the worst case output impedance is simply the resistance in the circuit. In this case, we used 100 ohms. Now let's look at the minimum input impedance. Um, similar to before, uh, looking at this circuit, um, both of the components are in series. So what we can do is calculate the total impedance with the equation uh, with the series resistor equation. So basically, X C it plus R is equal to the total resistance. Now, this solution is basically the same as the calculations that we did for the low pass filter. And the worst case input impedance is simply the resistive component in the circuit. I can show you this on um, Excel, maybe if that makes it a little bit easier to visualize. So obviously we have our frequency as before on column A and we have the capacitive reactance on column B and we have our fixed value resistance on column C. Now, the total resistance is simply um, column B plus column C. So that's what I've done in column E over here. And we can see that the reactance of the RC filter starts off very high at low frequency, but as frequency is increased, it very quickly drops to approximately 100 ohms which would be our minimum input impedance for this circuit and the worst case for driving it. So that covers everything we need to know for the question. Um, I will just give you a brief overview on low pass and high pass filters for some people who may not know. Um, I think this is very simple anyway. So let's go through the low pass and high filter ideal filter responses now. So obviously a low pass filter is configured as you see on the left hand side of your screen right now. You have a series resistor component and a capacitive component that goes in parallel with your load which would be connected on this node here and this node here. So essentially what this does is the capacitor um, acts as a bypass for very high frequencies because it's resistive quote unquote resistive element is very low for high frequency components so essentially it acts like a short circuit for high frequency components and acts like an open circuit for um, low frequency or dc waveforms on the other hand you have obviously the high pass filter which is configured 
in the opposite way to the low pass filter. So we have our capacitor which goes in series with these voltage source and then we have our resistor which goes in parallel with the load. The same explanation for the low pass filter stands here um, in that the capacitor will have a relatively high resistance for low frequencies and a very low resistance or reactance for uh, very high frequencies. So you can see that it would let through the high frequency components and not let through the low frequency components. To aid with this, you can um, look at my power transfer video as well to kind of under get a better understanding of maximum power transfer. So now let's look at the ideal response of a low pass filter. So there are a few things that characterize filters. These are basically the gain, stop band, pass band, cutoff frequency, um, 3dB point, which I've not mentioned here to keep this thing simple. So obviously in the stop band, you can see the gain of the input signal is very low. So it's being attenuated or reduced in, in amplitude. And in the pass band, this would typically be one for a uh, passive filter, passive filter being anything that doesn't use amplifiers. And then um, you have this point over here where the pass band transitions into the stop band and that is called the cutoff frequency. So you can see for an ideal low pass filter, anything below the cutoff frequency is passed through without being attenuated. And anything above the uh, pass band frequency or the cutoff frequency um, gets completely removed. The opposite is true for high pass filters. So you can see the stop band is now on the low frequency side and the pass band is after the cutoff frequency. So the very low frequencies we will get completely removed and the high frequencies will be allowed to go through unattenuated. So what you saw in the presentation was obviously ideal filters. However, filters don't really work like that in real life, as I will show you on simulation. Obviously, this is going to be closer to real life, but not 100% because this will ignore the capacitive elements. What I've done here is basically set up a AC analysis, and you can do this by going to simulate, edit simulation command, and then this is where it will start and you want to press AC analysis. Um, this defines the number of points um, in your analysis and your starting frequency goes here and your stop frequency goes here. So obviously you can see I've put down 10,000 points. My starting frequency I've kept very low and my stop frequency I've done to a thousand, uh, 1000 hertz, which should be enough to show you what I wanted to. So now let's run the simulation to see what the actual behavior is like. So the dotted line shows you the phase shift and the, the solid green line shows you the attenuation. Now this is a high pass filter. As you can see, the capacitor is in series with the load and the resistor is in parallel with the load. Obviously, I don't have a load on this circuit, but that doesn't really matter for this simulation. Now, you can see for very, very low frequencies, the attenuation is very high. So you've got an attenuation of more than 150 or more than 140 dBs over here. And as the frequency increases, so you've got frequency on the x-axis over here, the attenuation starts to drop and you start approaching 0 dBs. Now let's change this circuit so that it is a low pass filter. So I'm going to move around the components and now it's configured as a low pass circuit. And if you simulate this, we can basically see our ideal response, but a lot worse. So at the very low frequencies, you've got zero dB attenuation. 
And then as the frequency starts to increase, your attenuation starts to increase as well. But you can see that the slope is very slow. And if you wanted to increase that to get closer to the ideal frequency response of a low pass filter, you would basically need to cascade a lot of these filters. And that's how you, and then that would be a high order filter. Or you can start introducing inductors as well instead of the resistors. So then you have a LC filter. So thank you for watching today. Hopefully that solution and the explanation was useful. Uh, please do check out my other videos on the art of electronics where I go through exercises from 1 to 22. Catch you next time.